All right, everybody, today we're gonna to be talking about shot-for-shot -shot footage and how to do it by yourself, and specifically the rules that go into it in order to make it understandable, entertaining, and watchable, pretty much. So the first thing that you need to do is fill your frame with the only things you want. For me, this meant cleaning up my area. It took me about five minutes, as shown here. The next thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that you are putting only what you want in the frame. For instance, don't film yourself shirtless. It's weird, and only maybe you might want to see it, but nobody else does. Anyway, make sure that you're dressed appropriately. It doesn't have to be fancy. I am wearing the COVID casual, as I like to say, leggings and a zip-up sweatshirt. And so, you know, it doesn't have to be fancy. Just make sure that it is clothing. Anyway, the next thing that you want to do is make sure that you have the device that you're going to be using. And let's get started. The next thing you need, and probably most importantly, is your plan. So this plan for shot, for shot reverse shot is usually dialogue. It's usually a conversation. And so just write it out. It doesn't need to be fancy. I scribbled mine on a little sheet of paper and I just labeled it with the two characters. And so if you are going to be doing a dialogue with two people, usually you could do a wide shot. So it could be me and then it could hey. be another person. Essentially, you could have the two people in one shot and it would be your wide angle shot. And then you would then be able to switch back and forth between the two people and your, your viewers would pretty much uh, um, be able to understand what you're doing. However, if you're doing just by yourself, you might not have the capability of cloning yourself to make a second you. So you're gonna have to make sure that everything is very easy to understand. And one of those things is with the 180 degree rule. And the 180 degree rule pretty much says that if your camera is facing this way, you're never gonna switch it around so you can see the other side of the room, which you don't wanna see anyway because it's full of baby toys and like chaos that you may have caught a glimpse of as I was cleaning up the room. So I would never let my camera cross this threshold. So I could move it over there, I could move it over here, or here, or here, or here, but it would stop as soon as I got to this line right here. So I'd never point it facing that way. I'd never have my camera anywhere on this side of the line. So the other thing that you could do is you can also switch that 180 degree. Your line could be right here instead. And so you would be, you could have your camera here or anywhere there, but it would never cross, so it would be over here. So it doesn't matter what side of the room you choose, just as long as you've set that line and you start filming, then that line stays. Now, if you're going to be breaking the rules intentionally, eventually, that's fine, but for now, just kind of try and keep to the 180 degree rule. So the next thing that you wanna do is, it's always easier to understand if one person is in the room by themselves and another person enters the room to like tell them, hey, this is what's happening. People are more likely to understand the idea of there's one person and now there's two people but we don't see them because they're across the room talking to each other. That makes sense to people. So that's an easy way of getting around not showing and a wide shot because seeing two people from across the room isn't a very appealing wide shot anyway. I've moved my camera closer just so you can kind of get an idea but I'm going to be showing you filming this with my camera. Now the other thing is you're going to want to find a way uh, so that you don't have to have your hands in the photo. That might be propping it up against something. That might be like finding like a head like a lot of times a head just a heavy pop can or a milk carton will actually work for this or if you want to get more creative you can take a piece of paper fold it up stick it against your phone and then tape your phone like use tape to go across your phone that way the tape sticky part isn't going to get to your phone but it will then like you can st like stick it to things so like for instance like it'll have put it on the base. Don't try and just stick it with paper because obviously then it's just going to slip through the paper. But then you can like stick it to a wall with like being supported at the bottom. Clamp. So once you have your camera set up, you've got your lines written down, you're ready to go, you got your hair did. Once you're ready to start, what you want to do is you want to go through your lines a couple times by yourself so that you don't just waste footage going back and forth on them. And then just say all the lines of person A all by itself. But remember where you're going to be looking for person B. So like for instance, if I'm saying hello, and then I look over here, the next time I'm like, hello, it's going to be a little confusing. I saw someone doing this the other day, like on TikTok, and it really bothered me because I could not figure out like she was playing three people and she dressed differently for each one but if she hadn't done that she switched 
which characters were standing where and it was so bothersome to me like which she probably just got like five more views for me because I watched it like hate watched it like five times like what was she thinking why didn't she just put them in the right spot so make sure that you're facing the same way and just keep it consistent all of them will be done one at once and this is even more helpful especially if you have to change outfits instead of saying hello and then changing outfits and going away you can then go hello how are you I'm doing fine. And you can do them all from one line, just run right after another. The next thing you want to do is every time you deliver a line, stop your video. Give yourself a little bit of a cush between them. It's easier to stop and restart and stop and restart than it is to just go through all of them and split them apart as you go. You can always like give yourself a little bit more room. You can say the line many times and then pick the one out of it if you want. Either way between like lines and responses, stop your film because if you give one line wrong and you're just recording all your lines at once, you have to redo the whole thing in order to get it. So just go step by step. Hi, stop. How are you? Stop. Just kind of make sure each line is delivered separately. Now, for takes, you might be doing this a few times, so just be prepared for that. Don't feel like you have to get it right the first time. This is not a play. This is film. The magic of movies. I'm done. I changed outfits for the second character. Anyway, that took me about um, five minutes to do both of them. And the reason why I was so fast was because I had a plan. I was able to stick to the script and be able to get through it. If you don't go in with a plan, there's a good chance you're going to be doing this for like 45 minutes redoing everything because you can't get the lines right. So that was writing it out. The next thing that you are going to be doing is editing. Now I'm going to be showing you how to edit in splice. And so we're going to head over there. I'm going to bring in all my clips and show you how to kind of put it together. All right, so the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to bring in your footage into Splice. I'm using Splice and I'm using the iPad just because um, it's a bigger screen for me to record and Splice doesn't allow you to screen record what you're doing. So here I'm bringing it in now and here is my footage one by one. And now I brought it in chronologically for the most part um, so that I could do it. Now I'm going to go through here and I'm going to scrub through and delete the ones I do not like. So that's the first thing that you want to do find the mistakes, find the ones that you don't like, and just get rid of them to start with. And then so that you have got it. And then the other thing is set it into rough cut setting. Make sure that it's in order. So instead of it's all these footage, pictures, videos that I did of the first person, and then I switch over to the second person. So I'm going to make sure that it's going every other. You want to do this first, and then you can go down into trimming and getting it just the way you want. I'm also doing it in vertical footage because for this particular like demonstration I'm going to be doing the tutorial on YouTube which is horizontal orientation but I'm going to be publishing the final skit on TikTok and so that is vertical orientation. It's important that you are doing the orientation in the style that you want. The other thing that I'm doing is because Splice is a vertical orientation app I can't turn it sideways and have it be a sideways facing app on this particular iPad and so I'm filming this kind of in a funky way but intentionally because I want it to be able to be viewed. All right, so now I've gone in and I've gotten a rough cut started. So as you can see, I'm back and forth. I'm relatively cut down the, the fat off of the sides, but I do have a series of the same shot that I can't haven't quite decided which one I'm going to keep yet. And that's the really the key of a rough cut is have a few of the shots that maybe you aren't sure about right next to each other so that you can kind of go through and pick the best of them. Now, I realized as I was going through this, I kind of made broke the 180 degree rule a little bit. When I was doing this, I tried to draw a diagonal down my house so that when I was looking through the camera, the camera was still facing the same side, but as I was bending the camera to get myself framed correctly, I realized I kind of um, broke that rule. It's like 190 degrees instead of the, the correct like uh, 180, but the essential part was that my, my face is actually, I'm facing the right direction. So in here, I didn't just put myself nowhere and like walk in where I'm standing here is where I'm looking here. So if for instance, you're sitting down, make sure that you're looking up at whoever you're talking to. So just as long as you're making an effort so that you're planning out where it's going to be, that should be the like the key in this. For this video, um, if I were to correct it, I would just move my camera to the a little bit further to like this side of like the room so that it was facing the same direction 
are a little bit further to the side of the room, so I'm facing a little bit more. Like I'm not quite breaking the 180 degree rule, but it's a it's bent. It's bent just a little bit. So just be very aware of that while you're doing. It's super easy to do, and so just work as hard as you can so that you don't like completely break it. All right, so. Now we're going to go in and get the pacing right. For a video like this, like comedic pacing is very quick. It's very timed. And you don't want to have any hanging dialogue hanging off. So the moment one person's done talking, the other person's act should start or the next person's like shot should start. So you want it to go boom, 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 cut real fast and don't have any like hanging dialogue or any like brace in here. So in this, I'm going to have to do a lot of like, see how I'm paused I'm going to want to go back and forth and really cut out each of those. So the moment I stop talking, it switches to the next person. And also, I'm immediately reacting. I'm not like waiting for the reaction to start. So that's the key to kind of timing. Now in a drama, it's different. Comedic timing is very fast, where essentially, a lot of times there's a obviously there is different types of comedy however in drama a lot of times the drama is drawn out by silences and by reactions and so for instance if this were me coming in and giving her bad news I might put more like filled blank spaces to really get the point across that whatever I'm about to say is really hard to say and so that's something that you want to try and do as well so uh, I'm going to finish editing this and I'll show you the final product remember to export your for this one your dialogue is pretty much what your uh, video is you could add music in the background if you really wanted to you don't really need to and so to the once you're ready to export you want to export it and always export it at a full HD you don't need it at 4k and 720 is a little too low and then you can save it to your uh, camera roll and then send it off or publish it wherever you want to all right so now let's look at the final product hey hello so <laughs> this can't be good you know how you sometimes in class misspell things or mess up in front of the kids and they forgive you because it's okay and they forget the next day anyway? <laughs> it makes you human. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. Well, um, we're gonna be adding parents to your classroom. Okay. And then we're gonna record all of your lessons so everything that you do wrong can be rubbed back in your face till the end of time. So have a great day, bye. Wait, what? I realized afterwards I didn't actually film an outro. So I hope you found this helpful. I hope that you're able now to be able to go and do your own shot for shot video. And I will see you next time. Bye.